For the last three decades, Knowledge Center at Bursa has offered technology, resources, services, space, and a sense of community. Since 1985, 14,000 titles have been collected with care and attention to high financial literacy standards. In collaboration with a global community of institutions, we ensure access to the world's diverse intellectual and cultural economic heritage, as well as fast online services for connectivity to the financial world. Serving the Bursa Malaysia community and beyond, Knowledge Center at Bursa empowers you in your trading and investment analysis research. Financial information at my fingertips. Visit Knowledge Center at Bursa Malaysia today for the collections, for the services, for the sense of community. Have suffered financial loss while investing and you think your bank broker fund management company unit trust management company prs provider or distributor or their agent or representative is responsible you need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress where do you go sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution first Lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further questions. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favor, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favor, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280. Bursa Malaysia has been part of the Malaysian economic growth for over four decades. We have been working relentlessly 
to create a transparent, efficient and vibrant stock exchange. While we've been working at building a vibrant marketplace, inclusivity and contributing towards economic growth, we have also channeled efforts and resources towards supporting the community at large. Shares to Share is one such effort, which has been developed to create positive impact towards society and the environment. To put it simply, Shares to Share is a transparent and easily accessible facility that enables investors to donate their listed securities or proceeds from the sale of their listed securities towards charity through Yayas Unvers Malaysia. You can donate odd lots or even board lots. The funds from the sale of these shares will be channeled to approved charitable organisations and their respective initiatives or projects. Bursa Malaysia has waived its portion of the transfer fee, clearing and trading fees for all transactions that are conducted under Shares to Share. The participating brokers of Shares to Share have also agreed to waive their portion of the transfer fee and brokerage. The charitable organisations that have been selected have undergone the necessary due diligence process and have been duly approved by an independent selection committee. At least half a million populations live with some kind of disability. They are most of the time being left behind. We need to empower them, otherwise they will continue to be the liability. A lot of human resources wasted. We provide a lot of support for persons with disability who are young adults and adults. We have a social enterprise called Project I'm Possible where we manage to hire all persons with learning disability to work here. We have a cafe, bakery, weaving and we have an art gallery. Purity of thought, word and deed, that is action is very important to be really successful. We must know some skills to be able to help us then paperwork. The grant from shares to share will be used for, one is sewing, handicraft, classical dance, and so on. Our patients have to be fed. They have to be looked after. We look out for any sort of disease they might develop, and also those unforeseen circumstances. Thanks to Bursa Initiative, we can be a little bit easy on our patients if they are family members. Donations will all be channeled to organizations that are involved in the sustainable development of Malaysia. The Shares to Share scheme offers you the chance to do so in a simple and effective way. Versus Shares to Share allows us to do good by donating our shares to charities. You join us in making a difference to the society by donating your listed shares. Shares to Share is open to all donors, individual as well as corporates or other types of entities. You can transfer your listed securities via Bursa Anywhere app at a click. For more information, please visit our Bursa Malaysia website. Hello everybody, welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed our, by our company LifeChamp. Our webinar today is titled Micro Investment, Start Investing with Your Spare Change. So hello everybody, this is Shane Chu, I'm the moderator for this session. Now this session, we will talk about micro investment. Now how many of you here always have spare change? And you find that this spare change sometimes is a bit more burdensome, like especially come in the form of coins, right? In this session, uh, our speaker will share with you why we should not underestimate spare change and how we can make the best use of them by doing micro-investing. As usual, disclaimer, 
whatever we share in this session is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give any recommendation for you to buy or sell any list of uh, securities that we mentioned here. If you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risk. Now allow me to briefly introduce our speaker today. Uh, she's none other than Ms. Asna Ashad. So Ms. Asna is a licensed financial planner with Philip Wealth Planner. She's also a certified financial planner with FPAM, a certified trainer by HRD Corp. And she's also the secretary of the FPAM Johor chapter. So we are very pleased to have you here, uh, uh, Ms. Asna. How are you today? Hi, Shane. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. All right, cool. Uh, great to have you here. So we can't wait to learn from you about how do we do micro investing. So I'll hand over the session to you. All right. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for inviting me. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you for spending your uh, Friday night uh, with me. Uh, maybe to actually um, gain some knowledge. Uh, just a sound check is, can you hear my voice? If you can hear my voice, you know, just uh, type one. Hi, Calvin. Uh, so, all right, okay. So, your fat said one, you can hear my voice clearly, all right? Okay, so before we begin, maybe I just want to know um, some background of my audience. Um, maybe, you know, can you just tell me, you know, what range are you, let's say, for example, are, are you uh, early 20s to 30s? If you are early 20s to 30s, then type um, 10. If you are 30 to 50, then type uh, 20. And if you are above 50, then, uh, okay, Charlie say he's retiree. Okay, so I just want to know get to know my audience. Okay, Ezra said 20, Mr. Wong, 55, more than 55, Kelvin in 20s. All right, good, good, retired. So we have a mix of um, audience here. All right, 17. Oh, Trevor, 17. Okay, so the youngest now. All right, Mr. Miss Juan Rosalina is, uh, um, okay. All right, okay. Good, good. Okay, so I'm curious. Okay, let me share my, my slides. I hope that um, throughout our one and a half hour um, uh, time spent together will be beneficial to, for you. Okay, let me... Okay, sharing. I need to share slide. Okay, so okay. All right. Okay, bear with me, yeah. Okay, my name is Asna, as what uh, as how Shin has introduced me. So basically, um, for today, uh, this is will be the learning outcomes. So what I'm trying to actually achieve, maybe one of it uh, for you guys. Um, so the first one is basically for uh, my audience to actually understand the concept of micro investment and how it helps in cultivating the habit of investing. But maybe, you know, for those who are um, at the golden age, above 50, it's no longer about uh, the habit of investing, but maybe you are looking for, you know, diversification or, you know, the uh, better usage of your resources. So the second one is how does um, the, the, the advantage and disadvantage of micro investment compared to the traditional investment? So for the young one, traditional investment basically uh, investment like real estate, you know, buying properties, um, like uh, stocks, um, um, purchasing stocks, uh, mutual funds. So that is basically the traditional investment. So micro investment is a new investment, a new type or a new model of investment uh, that is available in the market. And the third one is basically to learn uh, about 
you know, micro investment uh, or, or micro investing platform that is available in the market and available in the Malaysia and guide to actually how to start. You know, you have learned uh, the theory or the, you have learned some knowledge. You know, how do you want to start investing uh, with uh, micro investment apps or micro investment uh, platform? And um, the last one basically, uh, maybe. Uh, to discover how to actually create a, a diversified portfolio to, be, to build long-term wealth, all right? So by end of this webinar, you will have a clear understanding of micro-investing and maybe, you know, for the young one, be well prepared to take your first step in, in, in investment world, all right? So what is basically micro-investment? Uh, you have heard investment, but, uh, you know, the, the term of micro so micro means small so basically um simply put my micro investing basically allows you to invest small funds of money uh, often as little as a few cents or a few ringgits uh, that to fulfill your long-term or short-term investment goal uh, so your investment goals can be you know saving for the young one saving for your rainy days your emergency fund uh for the middle middle uh, 30s will be you know trying to um save for your first house or a child child education fund and for the old one maybe you know just to make sure um not for retirement per se but then you know just having another um um pot of money uh aside Okay, so in Malaysia, basically, uh, micro investment can be relatively new because it was introduced in back in two thousand twenty. Uh, um, PNB started it, uh, and as a start, as a part of government initiative, um, that leverage digital experience, uh, because now everybody is holding a phone, so you know, and a lot of fintech, uh, financial tax is actually coming up, so they want to. Uh, leverage on that and uh, to encourage Malaysia to actually save and invest. So now that we understand what is basically, uh, so far so good, yeah? So far, I think uh, that is very simple definition. So we have understand the, the, the definition of it. We want to know what is the um difference between the tradition uh, micro investment and traditional investment so the first one which is capital capital to actually start uh maybe you you will require thousands or maybe you know uh, for some investment it can be millions you know, to just get started. So um, having a larger initial, uh, initial, initial capital will actually hinder uh, people who just want, who just start earning, you know, uh, young graduates to actually start investing. So um, like traditional investment, like property, real, uh, real estate or properties, for example. So let's say you are buying a house uh, of 300,000. You will actually need, 10% uh, of the amount uh, or, or, or the value of the property, uh, 30,000. On top of it, you also need to prepare about 3% of uh, fees, you know, for, for lawyer, for um, um, LHTN, so for your broker so to actually, you know, be able to enter into uh, investment of real estate properties. So, so it will take longer time for you to actually start as compared to micro investment. You can start as minimum as 10 ringgit or you can actually use your, 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 your spending. You are spending, uh, let's say 30, 35 ringgit and they round up to 36 ringgit. So the spare change can be accumulated to actually uh, start investing with a minimum requirement. Okay, so the first one is basically the investment amount. So the second one is, um, um uh, maybe you don't have uh, a substantial amount of um disposable income maybe you don't have 
um, uh, uh, you know, your after your uh, income minus your expenses, your 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 surplus might be very small for you to actually make a regular investment. Uh, that may require to you to actually, you know, uh, chip in regularly every month, 100, 300 ringgit. So you might not have that. So, so micro investment allows you to actually uh, invest in as and when you please, right? So the second one is uh, basically the accessibility. So traditional investment uh, usually require the assistance of someone else to actually help you to start with. Um, um, if you are talking about, uh, okay, go back to our real estate investment, you need a broker or you need a lawyer or you need an advisor or, you know, someone to actually advise you for stocks, you need remiser. So you always need an intermediary to actually help you to start your investment. So um, uh, so it, it also involves a complex, um, sorry. It also involves a lot of complex processes. You cannot just, you know, decide that, oh, okay, I have a sum of money, then I just want to start investing. No, you have to, ha to have a process of profiling or, uh, you know, uh, purchase, sales and purchase. You know, you go to the lawyer and then you go to the bank. So there's a lot of uh, processes for you to start. So as compared to micro-investment, you can just use your devices, your phone, and then, you know, uh, registered and then uh, put in money and then you are already an investor. So um, the accessibility or the ease of you to actually start makes uh, micro-investment an interesting um, um, alternative uh, for you who may be keen to start investing, all right? So the third one is uh, the fees and charges. So traditional uh, investment, like I say, you know, may involve higher fees, uh, not only when you purchase, but also after you purchase your investment because there is a, a maintenance fees or management fees. Um, you know, there's a lot of fees and charges involved. So it will actually take you a longer time to actually recover your initial investment. Whereas micro investment, you usually have lower fee and sometimes zero fee. And then it will be um, cost effective for small investors. However, there is a downside of it, but I'll, I'll, I'll share with you later. Okay. And the fourth one um, of, of the comparison between uh, micro investment and traditional investment is the liquidity. So for those who are fa not familiar with liquidity, meaning that uh, liquidity means um, the ability for you to actually um, um, sell off, you know, or convert your asset to cash. For example, uh, if you want to sell something, you are able to actually, uh, or you, uh, if you want to sell something, you are able to get the cash within a short period of time. And when I say short period of time, you are talking about, you know, one week or two weeks for you to access your cash. If let's say you are in need of money, you want to sell off, okay, you can get that within one or two weeks. Or if you want to buy, you know, let's say you are holding uh, a sum of money, you can immediately buy and hold the asset within a short period of time as well. So the liquid, uh, so for traditional investment, it will require a longer holding periods uh, and may not be as easily uh, liquidate, liquidated because you might, for example, if let's say you are buying gold, you might want to know whether the purchase price, price uh, but gold can be liquidated as well, sorry, uh, of house again. Again, the example of house, if you want to buy, there's a complex process and you might need to take a longer time for you to actually uh, um, assess, assess your money. Yeah. So, but um, micro investment typically usually is more liquid and it's allow, it allow customer to buy or sell uh, quickly. All right. Okay, so that uh, this is basically the more the four significant difference between um, traditional investment and also the micro investment. Okay, if you have any question, um, you can actually sh uh, um, uh, share the chat where then the uh, Shane will actually uh, um, raise out the question later, or you know, uh, as and when you want to know, to ask something, just uh, write it in the chat. Okay. OK, 
Okay, next. Um, so how does micro investing works? So um, usually micro invest investment or micro investing is offered through uh, robo advisory mo mobile, mobile and web ads or e-wallet, e okay? Uh, and then uh, based on the chosen uh, platform. So usually the money that you tipped in uh, or the money that you contribute will be pooled, will be uh, took into a pool of fund. And then this pool of fund will be uh, as a collective investment because let's say for example, uh, 100,000 people are every month or every day um, contributed uh, a sum of money. So that pool of money will be uh, invested to uh, investment scheme like um, um, unit trust or ETF. So ETF stands for Exchange Trident Fund. Um, I will um, explain a bit later about unit trust or exchange traded fund for those who are new in investment. And the investment strategy or the investment may varies from a range of uh, different asset class. It can be in money market, it can be in gold, it can be in commodity, it can be in stocks, uh, it, can, it can differ or it can vary from different sectors. It can be in healthcare, it can be in technology, it can be in consum consumer, it can be in retails, it can be in banking, so it varies. Uh, and geography as well, because uh, it can be uh, in Malaysia, the investment itself, I mean, you are investing uh, in invest unit trust in Malaysia, but the unit trust or the ETF itself can have exposure in other countries like Malaysia, like uh, Asia Pacific, like China, like developed market like um, um, glo or global market like, like US, uh, UK or Euro. So, um, so it varies. It depends on the fund provider uh, to uh, offer you which which investment or which uh, asset class that, that, that is available, okay? And um, investment, uh, investors can actually have the option whether they want to do round outs, round, round ups. Like I say, you know, you purchase something and then you set, uh, uh, you set an, a certain amount or you round up uh, to a certain amount and that balance will be put into your investment account. It can be regular uh, investment. It can be on daily basis. It can be on weekly basis. It can be uh, on monthly basis. It depends. Or it can be a lump sum investment. You just put one single investment and then that's it. So you, you it doesn't ca uh, affect your cash flow. For example, you have a, you, you receive your bonuses or uh, extra money or your overtime that you don't want to actually touch. You can just take that extra money and just put into this account. All right, and next month you don't want, you decided, oh, I don't want because I want to go holiday or I don't want or because it's Raya or, or Chinese New Year, okay. They allow you to do that, all right? So it gives that kind of flexibility. <coughs> so, like I said, um, uh, they, uh, um, micro investment, uh, tools is uh, they choose a uh, unit trust. So what is basically a unit trust? So unit trust is a form of collective investment that enable investors investors with similar objective to pull their funds. So objective uh, can be for capital gain or it can be for, you know, um, uh, dividend basis. Um, so, so, and then this fund will actually manage by for professional fund manager, which will select um the the asset class that they want to invest in okay maybe according to your risk profile so and then they take uh, and and then uh, like i said just now uh it may may include various assets all right so like cash bonds and deposits shares of properties commodities and <clears throat> basically unit holders or you as investors do not own the stocks or the security in the portfolio directly. You are called as a unit holder. You are owning the unit, but not the stock. For example, in unit trust, they invest in a company like um, Maybank. You are not the 
uh, you are not the shareholders of the mare bank. You are just the unit holder of that fund. So the return on the investment of the unit trust can, can be in two ways. Uh, one is basically um, distribution, income distribution, and another one is uh, capital capital appreciation. So uh, capital appreciation means that you are buying uh, at a low price and then you you sell um, um, your investment at a, a higher price to, to earn the profit. Um, the next one is um, exchange traded fund. So uh, exchange traded fund works similar like unit trust because it's a collective investment, but it is uh, it it compared to unit trust, they need to outperform an index. You know the fund manager uh, mandate or their their performance is evaluated to perform uh, to outperform the uh, the 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 index that they follow, but it ETF basically they just will co copy or follow the index that they benchmark, okay, um or the commodity. So they they, they just follow. They don't outperform. They just follow. Uh, and then uh, unit trust usually they you is sell through us, uh, through um, um, uh, in, invest asset management in, investment or asset management companies like you know the one that you are familiar with like principal like public mutual like Philip mutual so uh, investment or or maybe the one that like online platform like IFAS. But for ETF, it is actually uh, bought and sold and at an exchange. So you need to open a CDS account. Uh, but as a micro investment, uh, if, if let's say you are ETF investor, but for micro investment, you don't have to go there. You, ha you just have to open an account and then you, you just uh, select uh, um, like Wahid Invest. They actually, um, you know, uh, they have ETF exposure. So you just open an account with Wahid and then you have that ETF exposure without going to um, hassle of opening uh, a, a CDS account, you know, uh, finding a remiser and something like that. So <clears throat> again, their returns can be um, in two ways. It can be either in capital gains uh, or it can be also on dividends. A, okay, um, ASB, ASN, ASM under PMB can be considered as a micro investment. No, ASB, ASN, ASM is basically a unit trust. But then one of the micro investment portfolio has an exposure in ASB, ASN, ASM. Because like ASB and ASN, ASM, you need to um, invest a uh, um, if let's say you want to invest regularly, you need to at least invest hundred ringgit per month. But if let's say you for lump sum, uh, you need to invest uh one thousand. You know, one thousand you have to put in one thousand. If let's say you invest directly in ASB or ASN or ASM, but for micro investment, you can start with as little as ten ringgit or five ringgit even. So that is micro investment, meaning that a small change. Uh, a small amount you can start with a small amount that you don't re realize that because now you know five ringgit if you go outside right if the moment that you step out of the, the your 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 house um you will spend easily 50 ringgit you don't really re see that five ringgit or ten ringgit basically so you want micro investment allow that amount that you don't see to be parked into a more productive uh, rather than you put uh, five ringgit, you know, or ten ringgit, you put lying around in your house or under your pillow. Uh, you know, you you put it lying around or such. Or your one ringgit, you know, must be somewhere lah under your in in your car. I I'm sure that if you go to your car and then you dig up, you can find some money inside there. You know, easily ten ringgit. So that amount that lying around, rather than not being utilized, you put it in micro investment because when it accumulate, it can give in the long run. Uh, a, a, a substantial amount, okay? I hope that um, answer your question. Okay. So who is ideal uh, for micro-investors? 
So the first one is beginners with basic investment knowledge. You don't know how to start investing. You don't know where to start investing. You don't know what kind of investment that you should go. You don't know whether this investment is valid or not. So micro investment um, is suited with people with basic investment knowledge uh, that don't know uh, investment strategy, that don't know how to actually um, uh, manage their investment. So, uh, and doesn't have a, a very um, uh, large amount to actually begin with. So, so it's, micro investment is ideal to actually for, for people with that. Um, also, micro. Oh, sorry. Also, a uh, micro investment is uh, um, for people who don't have extensive time, or you know, to actually they have knowledge, but it's just that you know their work or their their commitment actually is is high enough for them to actually focus on their job or their career rather than spend their time to actually analyze the market. Uh, analyze the investment performance so they don't have time so they just want somebody else to actually manage for them so uh, yeah so micro investment actually um, is also good for people who don't have time and uh, micro investment also good for people that is tax savvy uh, you know you you just want everything on your fingertip uh, slide and everything can so you, everything, everything, uh, uh, apps, uh, is is ease of use. So you want you want that. So it's also ideal for, uh, tax savvy tax tax savvy people also are an ideal, uh, investors. Um, uh, those who don't have a saving habit, you feel that oh my god, you know you you are not investing or you are not saving. You are just parking the money. Uh, you put uh, a, a sum of money every month uh, when you receive your paycheck, you put a sum of money in this uh, investment account, like, like for example, like just now ASB. But because now you have apps available, at the end of the day, you feel like, oh my, oh my I have overspent. I don't have enough money to actually, for my, uh, before my next paycheck. So you will actually uh, tap into that market and then take it out. So... So, yeah, so uh, it's also good for people to actually start um, the habit of saving or habit of investment investing, okay? <clears throat> All right, next. So what is the pros and cons? I think I have touched some um, of the pros and cons uh, when, um, when I shared, but, you know, just I, I would like to just go through. The first one is low entry cost. You can start turning it. The low risk with diversification. So diversification means that you put um, your investment money in a few baskets so that if one basket, let's say for example, let's talk about geography. If let's say Malaysia is not performing, you can go to another 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 um, basket uh, in maybe Asia Pacific or global or maybe in sectors, for example, uh, during the COVID, um, tourism sector is doing badly. So you go to um, um, healthcare is doing great. So so when you do micro investment, they have already have a diversification. So it lower your risk. Okay, it has flexibility. You can choose whether you want to do regular, you want to do um, um, lump sum. Okay. Automatic saving, okay. Um, automatic saving basically will actually uh, one of um, the recommended way to actually uh, for you to build a habit of investing or habit of saving because once automated, the moment that you you receive your paycheck, a certain amount of money automatically deducted without you realizing it. So it will actually unconsciously or subconsciously helps you into building a fund. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, encourage investment habit requires simple investment knowledge. So let's go to the cons of micro investment. Okay, um, I said that it has a low fee, but usually micro investment also have um, a regular fee. 
So for example, let's say you have a certain amount, they have a threshold, you have a certain amount below their threshold, they will actually charge a monthly administration fee, they say, you know. Um, so um, if let's say you don't invest regularly, you just put um, one lump sum that is very minimal, let's say 50 ringgit or 100 ringgit, very minimal lump sum investment, although it allows, but then if let's say after that you don't put in every month so the cost or, or the administrative fee will eat out your your investment so uh, example uh, for 50 ringgit and then they charge administration fee 1 ringgit 50 cents so or 100 ringgit they charge uh, uh, okay let's say 100 ringgit uh, to make a comparison with unit trust so in unit trust if you invest 100 ringgit there is a sales charge of 5% so 100 ringgit, then 5 ringgit will be deducted. That's it. There is no monthly management fee. So 5 ringgit. But if let's say you put in micro investment 100 ringgit and then you don't put any additional amount after that, every month they will put, they will deduct 1 ringgit 50 cent. For example, uh, the company um, uh, decide that they will actually charge you 1 ringgit 50 cent for administration fee. So by the sixth month, if you don't put any additional money, they will already deduct you nine ringgit, 1.5 multiplied by six is, uh, yeah, nine ringgit. Or after, or if you don't put for a year, it's already 18 ringgit. So that is a, a, already 18% of your initial capital. So, so the fee will eat out if let's say you put, don't put it regularly. Uh, the second one is it have limited investment option. It's only in trust and JF. You don't, uh, you don't have exposure to other in, uh, investment uh, vehicle, and you have limited control on investment. You just pick like a la carte one. Uh, uh, I want or oh, or oh, not a la carte set. Uh, either this one, this one, or this one. You don't have um customization according to your risk or your needs. So you have limited control on investment. And then there's no personal life advice. In investment, basically, you need some sort of advice uh, in terms of you know uh, setting up your goals, um, analysis of your cash flow, your surplus, your, uh, your, expense, uh, your income. Your, um, so people need to analyze you know, out of 100% uh, of your paycheck, where goes, how much will actually go to your um, commitment, your loans, your inv uh, how much should be for your investment, how much should be for your uh, expenses. So you don't have personalized advice. So you don't know whether, let's say you just uh, you start investing in micro investment, you don't know whether the amount that you save or the, the amount that you invest, whether does it will, does it enough, does it sufficient, does it fulfill your financial goals that you set for, for short term, for mid term, for long term. So you don't have person, that kind of personalized advice. When you don't have that kind of personalized advice, um, over the long term, you realize uh, the moment, let's say, for example, you want to set up for your um, your your wedding for the youngsters, right? You want to get married. So after five years or 10 years, you, you just regularly invest without knowing whether it's sufficient or not. After five years, when you want to get married, you have a sum of money, but then eh, you realize, eh, uh, not enough. Lah. How? You lost, you lost the, the, the time horizon um, um, uh, you know, for, the, for the period that you invest. Whereas when, if let's say you have a sign or if you have met a financial planner or if you have talked to um, um, a unit trust advisor, they will actually say, okay, what before you begin, what do you want to achieve with this amount? <clears throat> How much you want? So you, when you set that, they will actually uh, you know, analyze for you how much you actually need to chip in for for, for, for uh, monthly. So for retiree, for example, um, let's say you have a sum, maybe your EPF money or your... Um, um, your gratuity if you're a government servant you you are looking to actually preserve the amount 
But then when you put in micro investment, whereby you can actually put some of your micro investment to give you a passive income, uh, but you don't know how much you need to actually um, sustain for the amount that you need uh, on, on your yearly or annual basis. So then the moment when the return came out, oh, it doesn't match because the return is, uh, does not meet your expectation. All right. So 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 that is the downside of um, micro investment because it's you and a robot advisories. There is no customized because investment sometimes need a, a human touch basically because it also uh, involve or it also link with your financial behavior, which computer or uh, uh, robot advisories cannot. Uh, not reach that moment to actually understand your behavior as a human. All right, and um, the last one is if insufficient for long-term goals. Like I say, you know, if you don't have um, a personalized, uh, let's say, for example, let's say you decided that, um, um, I'll, I'll share you um, uh, a financial, Calculator. So let's say you decided that you want to round out every day two ringgit. Two ringgit of your spending every day. Two ringgit to your micro investment. So, so the amount is a month, uh, two ringgit. So for a, in a, a month, in 30 days, it will be 260 ringgit, right? So 60 ringgit. Uh, this is for example for youngsters, yeah. Uh, so you 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 put in you chipped in the money for let's say for example short term period for about less than three years, let's say thirty six months, and then give about six percent interest rate, and um uh, the, the the dividend or distribution is given annually. So if you calculate after three years. The two ringgit that you chip in every day will be at that time after three years, 2,366. Not bad. As a youngsters, after three years, this might be, you know, for your emergency fund, as a start of your uh, emergency fund. Let's say uh, you don't review, you just uh, focus on this micro investment, you feel that they are working uh, perfectly with you, you don't realize that they. You, uh, you know what do you want. So you just put in uh, for the next um, nak kahwin kan? Let's say you want to get married in five years time. Uh, 60 months. So you feel that, oh, I think I have any investment that I can I can touch on when I want to get married. So after five years, the amount is only about 4,189. That is five years midterm plan. So do you think that is enough for you to start get married? Maybe if you make it simple, you just you know go to registrate uh, registration of marriage and then just got married. And that's it without any wedding. So that but but usually people want to have some sort of celebration, right? So this amount might not be enough. So it's in it's insufficient in a long time period. So let's say if you if again you have that attitude that. Um, I just have this micro investment because it was so easy. I don't have to actually learn about investment so much. They do everything for me. Just, you know, let them manage my money. So you do this for 30 years. So you you start in when you are 20, you 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 do it when you are, 30, uh, let's say you start with 25 and then you do it for 20, uh, 30 years, which is 55, age of retirement. So for and you think this is sufficient for your, uh, um, your. Go back to the slide. Um, um, micro investment is good 
for you to start but in a long time a long uh, a long period of time it might be insufficient okay let me share again my slides um is there any questions are you all guys okay so far uh if you are okay if 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 you feel that you, you so far so good just give me um uh uh a 10 uh, today is uh, oh sorry and 11 11 because today is my anniversary my wedding anniversary 11 during wedding anniversary ah 11 okay good okay Okay, where, where do we go back? Okay. okay. Thank you for... Oh. Thank you, Ezra. Mm, 11, yeah? <laughs> okay, next. Um, so... How do we start investing with micro investing apps or website or platform? You know, so the first one is basically basically you download the app and create an account. And then you connect a funding account usually to your banks. You know, like Maybank, uh, and then for you to withdraw the money or for you to actually um, contribute into the account. And then some will have a portfolio uh, based. They will have some sort of questions for you to ask uh, for you to answer. And based on the uh, uh, based on the, uh, the 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 answer that you give to the question, they will actually um, assign you a portfolio whether you are conservative, moderate, or aggressive investors. And then, uh, uh, and then after that, you set up set up your your investment mode whether it's uh, regular or uh, um, or one off investment. And then you just look at the apps. Either you know you you just monitor the performance, whether it grow, and then whether you need to at particular time whether you want to top up <coughs> or withdraw the investment. <coughs> Sorry, um, let, let me just take a drink, a sip of water. <coughs> All right, so it's it's easy again. The benefit of micro investing is basically because it is easy. <clears throat> Next, okay, now we have talked about all this what it is, uh, what is the different and everything. So let's talk what is available in the market. <clears throat> so the first one is rice, okay, because this is um an Islamic capital webinar. So I'm only going to share um um investment app that is Sharia compliance an investment app that meet the characteristic of one it can be it can be start with a low minimum amount of investment below 100 ringgit and two it has the feature of round ups okay it, it can be idea of these two characteristics lah. either you can start low or you can use your spare change you know like the topic of this presentation you invest with your space spare change so uh, i might have opt out those who are not Sharia compliance, those who are, uh, you know, have a higher uh, initial amount. So the first one is rice. So rice is basically based. Uh, they, it's not homegrown. It's basically from Australia. Uh, in Australia, they started in two thousand sixteen, and only after four years, uh, they come to Malaysia two thousand twenty, and then introduce rice in Malaysia. <clears throat> and they partner with uh, uh, PNB, Pemodelan National Berhad. So, uh, since they partner with PNB, then the offering they are offering is basically, uh, um, the fund, the unit trust fund that they or they offer or they the, they offer to the investors is basically uh PNB fund lah, like ASB, ASN, ASM, that you can start minimum like ten ringgit you can uh, you five ringgit you can start already. So, uh, and then uh, Raiz meet all these three characteristics. You can do round ups. Uh, you can invest regularly as weekly, monthly. Uh, so um, um, you can also um, have a minimum amount. Okay. So uh, the asset class is bond, shares, commodity, and cash. What is the return for like rice? It depends on the uh, 
it depends on the portfolio that you choose and also the the asset class um so if you have if you are if you are in moderate um oh, sorry you are, if, 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 if you are conservative then will be a, a lower return ah. if you are aggress uh, moderate or aggressive then you can look at about 4 to 6% to uh, depending on the market lah, basically aggressive will have a higher higher return okay <clears throat> because rice have a portfolio you you have to choose uh then monthly fee charge 1 ringgit per month for account under 6000 and if let's say above 6000 is 0 0.025 uh 5% per month uh yeah they 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 do have fee charge but they have that monthly charge so <coughs> so <coughs> rice is an example where i say that if let's say you you put a, a, a um as a minimum amount of 100 ringgit and then you don't put any more then basically the fee the management fee will definitely eat up your investment <clears throat> so this is some of their features uh their home screen lah. uh if you use your phone can uh they will actually show your current va account value how much the overall value um how much that you have invested what is the market return and also they have extra feature because um they have these referrals if let's say you offer uh, they have your referral code if you uh, get your friends to actually invest with uh, using your referral code yeah, then you ha they will have a referral fee that you can uh, and then that referral fee can be sent to invest to your uh, investment fund so it is it's actually encourage uh, people to you know if you have that basic knowledge you can get your friends and then you can earn from that uh. and then uh, your dividends you can withdraw or you can you actually just reinvest it reinvested means that you don't you don't take that profit you put in back into the fund to re to to invest back okay and also they have these features of you know uh, projected value um this part the, the third part whereby um if let's say you consistent how much would does it change why my full loading Hold on, let me see whether they change this like okay um, Okay, it's moving. Okay, um, roundouts. Uh, this is the features roundouts uh, that you can use for spare change. Yeah? What is the best micro investment platform currently in terms of return? Mm, hard to say because it depends on you as an in investment. If you want a higher return, then you basically need to know that you are higher returns mean there is a possibility that uh, your capital might be there is a capital loss risk if let's say the market is not doing good especially if let's say uh, in Malaysia's market right now right so if you are looking for a return you also have to bear for the um, the, the the loss and if you are looking for higher return, then for sure you can other you have to have exposure in stocks. You cannot have exposure in money market because it's very okay. Um, um, the risk, the risk over return, right? So it started with money market, cash deposit on money market, and then bond, and then uh stocks, or it can be bond mixed asset between bond and stocks and it can be stocks and then it can be uh, even stocks also they have uh, stocks that can give a higher return that focus on capital uh, gain they don't they give lower dividend so if you want to have a higher return you have to have that knowledge of how much if you if you talk about stocks for example how much risk of loss that you are willing to actually uh, bear uh, or how how long do you want to hold? Kalau nak higher return kan? Uh, sorry, um, automatically go to Malay. Uh, so if if so 
if you are looking for a higher return, uh, then uh, you also have a, a lot of people always look at return without considering the risk that they can manage. So there is a fund that can give uh, about 60%, but now they, it drops, it lost to negative uh, 30%. So when it happens to a loss, can you take it? So, so you want to get a return, make sure you also need to actually evaluate your risk, uh, your risk uh, uh, tolerance. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if, if that's, again, it goes back to investment 101. Uh, before investing, uh, you have to actually start uh, your uh, emergency fund first, and then you have to know your risk profile first. Um, so in micro investment, You 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 want a higher return, so you choose aggressive. But then when the market down, there's a lot of people that feel that investment is not good. Because they say that, ah, I'm having a loss. Uh, investment is not good because I'm having a loss. Without realizing that you actually uh, invest not according to your risk profile. Yeah. So uh, again, before investing in risk profile and then then your return over, um, if we are looking for higher return, then you have to actually manage your your knowledge, your uh, time horizon, a longer period of time horizon will actually lower your risk. Okay. Uh, in the market, how if you want to go, if again, if you ask the question, uh, what is the best micro investment platform currently? There's no uh, platform that can give a consistent return because it, again, it depends on the market performance. Uh, so now maybe some market are doing low, but then what about Wahid? Wahid is, again, is exchange traded fund. We just copy the index. But again, index also, um, index also have up and downs. And if you're talking about index, right? Um, you have to talk about, if you want to see a good performance for index, you definitely have to go a long term period, about 10 years, 15 years to see a uh, consistent return. Uh, if I'm mistaken, about 10% return in 10 years. So in to say that you have, you cannot touch the money in 10 years, you have to regularly, whether the market is up or down, you have to invest regularly. So a lot of people, when market is down, they they know that they have to invest and they know that they have to, to take advantage of dollar cost average. But the emotional part of, of them will actually stop them from investing because they are afraid the market is going down, 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 down. What, what happened if the, the market is kept coming down, kept coming down, coming down? What are you going to, to do? Are you going to stop investing or are you going to... So, so if you talk about... Uh, Wahe or ETF index, then it has to be long period of time that you can see um, the full performance because it's just copy the index. Okay. Mm, okay. I think I need to just speed up. Uh, okay. Investing for round ups. Um, you can see, right? Um, some of the features, uh, like, you know, the number four, they, they show you how much is your spending, about 30. How much is that? cannot see. Uh, so, so how much is the spending? How much is the drawn out? So they will actually tell you where where is the money. So in Raiz, uh, let's say your round out is uh as your round out is uh 40 cents or one ringgit, they won't start investing. The moment it reach five ringgit, only then they will put into your investment account. Okay, portfolio, like I say, uh it helps beginner investors uh, to assign their their portfolio as compared to your your if you, you go to your traditional investment like unit trust right you might you if let's say you do it yourself uh investor you don't as you you go to ifas or uh you you don't assign any unit trust advisor that don't do so you you might invest in fund that is not matched to your risk profile 
Uh, so, but then for Raiz, they already have a portfolio assigned to you that you can choose either you want to go to a uh, uh, conservative, moderate or aggressive. Okay, and at any time you can actually change your your portfolio. And even in uh, we actually recommended you to review your risk profile every year. Okay. Okay. All right. So the second one is best best by uh Bank in Bank Islam Malaysia Bank Bank in Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad Investment Management. Uh, it's an invest uh, ma investment management company. So it's also available uh through apps. Um, uh, they don't have round out. They have regular or lump sum investment. They also invest in unit trust and the fund that they provided is also uh, the fund that is offered by Bank Islam lah. Bank Islam uh, Management Berhad. And they have the option, they don't have, uh, they, they have the option whether, like for Raiz, you have you you have to choose the option, portfolio, whether you are conservative, moderate or aggressive. But for best, you can actually choose a portfolio like Raiz or you want to do it yourself, you want to invest yourself. And um, the minimum invest opening account is zero. Maybe you don't have to have a, a big, um, what we call a minimum account to invest is starting gate, but to open account can be zero. But the moment that you reach starting gate, you can start investment and Because if let's say, and then uh, uh, global equity fund is 1.8. So global equity fund, they have like a collaboration with Arabes, a UK based investment company. So they have that kind of exposure. And Suku, Suku is similar like bond, but Islamic, Islamic bond is 1.2% uh, per year. <coughs> okay. Um, and then the third one is uh, go uh, go invest by Touch and Go. Uh, they, I don't, I, I'm not saying they, their fund uh, invest in new trust, but only in um, money market and it's managed by principal. Uh, uh, but they do have round ups. So you can actually uh, use your spare, spare change to actually use, you know, your e-wallet, right? Memang uh, you are using that for spending to pay something so you can actually use your round outs. you can set the round outs, um uh, and then use the fund to actually start investing uh not investing like start putting in money market because money market give daily return as compared to uh you put in banks right banks give you annual return and annual return also not so big lah not so huge so but then for money market they give you monthly return the 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 the, 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 the the dividend is given on monthly basis. So over the time, it will actually give uh, a better return than compared to if you put your money in uh, a, a saving account. Okay. So minimum amount is starting get. So this is their, um, their home screen whereby you can just choose go invest. So they will verify you, your identification, everything, and you can start putting your money, your spare change in uh, this account. Okay, um, I think uh, uh, this is my last slide, uh, but I have touched it um, when I, I did my presentation. Again, begin before investing, begin with an end in mind, set your financial goals, how much you want, uh, when you want it, for what you want it, because a, a lot of people just start, you know, okay, okay let's start investing because uh, everyone is investing. But when you don't put a specific goal or a specific, um, time that you want to use you know you you don't have a purpose when you don't have a purpose then it's, it's kind of you know you don't have that drive to actually achieve your goal right so begin with an end an, an in mind and again i think i have emphasized emphasis this you know your pro, know your profile beforehand so you know your risk tolerant uh before investing create emergency fund because why okay why do you need to have an emergency fund let's say uh, not even for youngsters lah. For those who are receiving that this EPF or or gratuity fund, right? Uh, if you don't have your 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 basic 
um, emergency fund, um, if something happen, you, you put everything in your investment. Uh, if some or you the moment that you receive, let's say five hundred thousand, okay, you 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 will you, you don't have a specific goal. You start you know um, expanding your house, uh, renovating your house, buying things that you do, you cannot buy before this, and then you start investing. But the moment of emergency happen, then where do you are going to touch your 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 where are you going to withdraw that money? So the first thing. Uh, when you have that lump sum amount that you receive a lump sum amount upon your retirement, right? It's good for you to actually set aside your emergency fund first. Um, and then, you know, only then you go to towards your needs and then your wants, your lifestyle upgrade or anything, okay? Uh, and investing is not saving, but in mind of the risk, return and possible loss. I think... Uh, that's about it. If you have questions, you can actually post on the chat and Shane can share or I can actually answer. I hope um, you, uh, this session has been beneficial for you. Right, go. Um, I pass back to Shane. <coughs> Thank you so much, Asna, for doing this segment for us so that we can understand about micro-investment and how do we invest our spare change. If you have any questions to ask our speaker, Today, please write your questions in the Q and A box. Yeah, uh, don't write them in the chat box. And I also noticed that Asna has addressed uh, many questions along the way, uh, as uh, she's look at the chat box to re respond to that as soon as it pops up. So, uh, if you have any question, please write them in the Q and A box. I'm not sure if I answered this, but what is, uh, what about Wahed? Have you addressed this, Asna? It's asked by Kok Long. Uh, you are on mute. Uh. Cannot hear you. Um, I I've addressed it. Uh, but again, just uh, let me address it again. Wahid is is an investment app, but I don't share it today because uh, the minimum amount is one hundred ringgit. Mm. But again, uh, if you can afford, if let's say you are earning five thousand and one hundred ringgit is very minimal, so Wahid is a good. Uh, alternative for your investment because uh is it it is uh an uh invest in exchange rate fund yeah so very minimal management needed very minimal knowledge investment knowledge needed yeah mm, all right is it Sharia compliant yeah it is it is all right how about a uh, stash away uh? stash away is not Sharia compliant so uh revision can do another for non Sharia. <laughs> Okay, sure. All right. Um, we have a participant who want to ask, what is round up? What exactly is round up? Because it so round up basically, <clears throat> yeah, round up basically. Let's say you, you are going to buy groceries, right? Uh, using your Maybank account, your May account, for example. So when you buy, you purchase uh your your something lah, whatever that goods that you buy, let's say the amount is thirty four ringgit or thirty five ringgit forty cent. So rounds up meaning that they round up the amount uh you pay to the merchant is thirty five. Or if you use your e-wallet, right? Same. You pay using your e-wallet. Uh, and then uh, like 15 ringgit. Then you set the amount, uh, let's say 2 ringgit. You want to, uh, or 30 ringgit. You, you, you pay 30 ringgit. You round out to 15 ringgit. Because 2 ringgit too, uh, you want to uh, channel to your investment account. So round out basically, they, they round out the amount based on your based on what you said yeah okay so the additional money will go towards the investment platform yeah yeah mm, all right thank you so much um the next question is by azru uh what do you what exactly is a money market so money market okay um uh money market basically um uh, okay let's go 
uh, I'll give you an analogy. You deposit your money to the bank. <clears throat> Uh, one thousand ringgit. So, so basically, the system work is the money that you save in the, in the deposit that uh, the bank has in the in the, um uh in all their customer account will actually be loaned to another customer. So they give loan your deposit. They give loan to another customer. So money market basically, uh, it's not loan. You put the money for investment for investing in money market. So the money is uh being used to or being given to the banks or any of uh, those who are <clears throat> institution and in return because they use uh, the money that you you put in for investment they, they use the money and then they agree for a monthly return uh, actually they, they calculated the return on daily basis but they give it on monthly so so it's similar like cash deposit that you put in a bank but bank they use the money use your money and loan but for money market, they use your your the investor's money, not the depositor, the investor money, the pool of investor, and then give it to uh other institution that want to use the money. Yeah. Um, thanks for addressing the question of um uh, money market. So I guess we are all <laughs> clearer on what exactly is money market. So Asna, uh currently the um uh, micro investment landscape only involve investment into funds, right? Be yeah. it in the form of unit trust or be it in the form mm -hmm. of ETF. Are there mm -hmm. any other investment products that they allow you, micro investing allow you to invest in? Um so far not that I know of the one that actually the market that the in Malaysian market that I have researched on, right? For the Chari on one is this two only. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So these two are the only uh, channels that we can uh, in invest our spare change. Mm, yeah. Maybe in future they will develop, but I'm not sure, yeah. Mm. All right. If any other questions, you may write, uh, write them at the Q&A box, yeah? Oh, I think Ezra asked a good question. For all these micro-investment platforms that you just shared, um, for the deposit that we put in, is it protected by PIDM? No. Because one is investment. PIDM is for deposit, but yeah, it's not protected. Mm. So mm. PIDM uh, protects uh, savings account, right? Yeah. Yeah, not for not investment account. No. <laughs> and even right. if you if you put your money in your your uh, bank also they have a limit of 200,000. Only if you have two million, they don't cover the remaining lah. Unless you put two hundred thousand in different different bank. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Any other question? Maybe let's do a little bit of survey. Uh. how many of you here have already started doing micro investing through one of the platforms that uh, uh Miss Ansna mentioned? If you do. You type me, M E. If you have not, you type no, N O. Wow. Okay. Many of you here have already started uh, doing micro investing. How is it so far? Those who say yes, right? How is it so far? <laughs> Do you have a decent return? Uh? I'm someone who have not started yet in micro investing. Uh, I actually did not check, you know, the return from all these platforms. Uh, I don't. I I don't even have a uh uh touch and go go plus yet. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe I should start. It's time one, for uh. you to start, Villa. Low return, uh -huh. Low return, probably. I um uh, I. I I'm guessing that you pick this uh, low return fund like money market fund. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you do micro investing, if you just started out, you know, you can't expect to make huge return yet uh, because the startup capital could be not as big as you do a big lump sum investment. But, you know, uh, slowly and slowly, uh, you may have a snowball effect.
But it's a it's a good starting point starting point lah, rather than you don't start at all, right? <clears throat> mm, yes, that's right. So the next question by Ting Sing is for this micro investment, uh, do you think that it can beat fixed deposit? I guess it's referring to return. If you would choose aggressive, it can lah. But then fixed deposit, <clears throat> the characteristic is you have to, it, it's fixed, meaning that you have to have, you have to hold a certain period of time uh, and it's, it's illiquid, not illiquid lah, but then you have to, you you have to adhere to the time, whether it's one month, six month or 12 month, if you are looking, if you are looking for like a higher return with FD, right? For sure, you have to hold like one year or three years but accessibility uh, liquidity is very low lah in that case in uh, and and micro investment have better access uh you you have a actually again go to portfolio lah you know uh, you can have fd at the same time you also can have micro investment the function is different you know the rules the function you use fd for what for for you use for um uh, micro investments is for what? Sometimes people actually invest uh, in F uh, not invest, put money in FD because they want to actually have that collateral attached to it. Or oh, yeah, so you it, it doesn't mean that one is good or better because it depends on why uh, or the purpose of um that that uh um financial instrument. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Thanks for the clarification. I guess the landscape for micro investing now is uh uh being developing. I mean it's under development. I guess uh when it becomes more mature, there'll be a lot more selection of funds that uh that you can purchase through all these uh, micro investing platform. Maybe in the future we can have a unit trust on REITs, right? So that can help us to buy or uh, invest in properties, uh, not only in Malaysia but also around the world. So we'll see. Okay. Whether we have any unit trust fund that invest in the that that do REITs or ETF that invest in REITs, right? Now I think um recently I also read the news that uh Touch and Go is collaborating with uh, Bursa Malaysia and also Afin Huang to roll out, you know, uh trading through the uh through the uh, Touch and Go app. Right, as Afin uh through Afin Huang as a broker in the Touch and Go app. And I think the uh, uh our Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has also uh announced that uh they are looking into uh allowing buying shares not on board lot basis but on single share basis. Okay, and I think that will open up you know more avenue for us to do micro investing instead of buying one standard lot, one board lot, we can buy one share. So what is your view on this, Asna? Good lah, more diversification. Um, you know, because um, again, um, over the period of time, the 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 product developed, right? So uh, it, your your knowledge and your sharing on your your knowledge and also your experience in investment also grow. So first, you know about money market and then you know about unit trust and then you know about exchange traded fund. Now you know about stocks. So the more you know, actually, you actually build up your confidence. You, you It build up your habits of investing. It build up your confidence uh, to invest in in uh, a, div a diversified access, asset class. So so if if, let's say, it's ready, then maybe, you know, um it's a good alternative uh, for, for people. It gives you more offering. Mm. Mm, that's great. So looks like there are no more questions on my panel right now. So uh, maybe Asna, you want to give some uh, concluding remarks before we wrap up this session? I'll say um 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 micro investing is something that actually you really, really want to consider, especially if you are new and you haven't started investing. Uh, build up your confidence, build up your habits, and then over the period of time, you know, set your goals uh, and review your performance. Uh, 
you um just put it as one of your investment portfolio yeah. you can you can also after that diverse into you know unit trust private mandate uh structured uh like you know um fc F, F, fcbo but it, it you will learn over the time yeah. so start start the most important thing is start start investing yeah Mm, all right, thank you so much, Asna. I think one of our, our participants here, Ezra Roslan, also echo what you have just said, which he said that uh, micro investing is a decent and good for beginner. All right, thank you so much. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from uh, Miss Asna Ashad, who is a licensed financial planner with uh, Philip Wealth. All right, thank you so much, uh, Miss Asna.